This beautiful little creature is a doe, and she's very timid, so she's not easy to get near. But we wouldn't get near her at all unless she'd been hand reared. The point is, when you look at a doe, it's not always easy to tell if it belongs to the antelope group or to the deer group. For that, you need to look at the males. There's one male in this herd, and he's the buck. You can see his magnificent horns there. And the antelope are closely related to cattle. You know, the cows have horns, well, so do sheep and uh, goats. And their horns are unbranching, they have a point on the far end, and they simply get bigger and longer as the animal gets older. They stay on the head and grow continuously throughout the animal's life. And that's an antelope horn. The deer, on the other hand, have antlers. And these are quite different. They're branching structures. And the older the animal is, the more points it has on the antler. You notice they haven't got any horn on them at all. They're solid bone and they're grown for the ritual fights of the mating season each year and after that's over they're discarded and the stag runs around without any antlers until he grows them again for the following breeding season. And this is what an antler is like. Imagine growing two of those every year. It's solid bone and it's very heavy. It's an extraordinary thing. It, it has to grow of course terribly fast if it's going to be grown in a year. Both of them have to be grown in a year and you can see something of the clue that shows you how that rate of growth is achieved. Each antler starts as a bud on the forehead and it grows and branches under a very soft skin known as velvet. And under that skin are blood vessels, a great number of them. And you can still see the tracks they have left on the surface of this bone. They run all over it, bringing up nutrients to lay down the bone and help it grow into this great branching structure. Eventually that velvet dies and it's scraped off on trees and things and the antler is ready for use until it too is discarded. Well, that seems extraordinarily wasteful. Why should an animal, particularly when food is scarce and uh, you need to make the best use of resources, grow two of these a year and uh, throw them off? Well, nobody really knows, but the answer seems to be that when they're used in the ritual battles, very often these prongs can get broken, or even the antler can get broken quite severely. And that's no good for the stag, because he can't win battles with broken antlers. And if he doesn't win the battles, he doesn't get to breed. So the strategy seems to be grow the antlers, have the battles with them, and whether they get broken or not, discard them and grow a new pair for the fights that you'll need for breeding the following year. Well,